Hello, my name is Guillermo Gallego, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the three main event camera designs. The first and most popular one is called the Dynamic Vision Sensor, or DVS. And this is an event camera whose events represent brightness changes, and they output a stream of events. Each event has the pixel coordinates of the brightness change, the time at which the change happened, and the polarity, which is the sign of the brightness change. And this sensor models the transient visual pathway, that is the WHERE system. If this is a, a view of the cells in the, in the retina, the human retina, then the DBS uh, models the highlighted one, so not all of them. We are um, leaving out the horizontal sense and the amacrine cell. So we are all mostly concentrated on this, the photoreceptor, the bipolar, and the ganglion cells. And from these uh, simplified uh, biological functions, then we model every pixel of the DBS. And you can see here the three parts, the photoreceptor, the bipolar cell, and the ganglion cell, which are like converting light into uh, an electrical signal, then differentiating and amplifying it, and comparing it to some threshold values to produce on and off events. And from this pixel design, then we go into VLSI, so very large scale integration, and produce uh, the vision sensor. This is the aspect of the DVS-128 from about 10 years ago. The spatial resolution has changed. Uh, it was in this, in the first commercially available camera, the DVS-128 was uh, 128 by 128 pixels. But now recent uh, versions of the DVS, they reach uh, about one megapixel. That's a very, very high number. And this is a, a type of sensor that is manufactured by companies such as uh, Innovation or Samsung Electronics. The second, uh, uh, perhaps uh, popular type of uh, event camera is called the ATIS, a synchronous time-based image sensor. And this uh, sensor outputs uh, also events. So they are called change detection or CD events. And these are like the DVS, um, and the, which model the transient visual pathway, the word system, and that's what you see here in the picture. So light comes to the photodiode, it's converted and amplified and produces this events. So if in the middle plot, if this black is the light that arrives at the photoreceptor and it's converted um, into a voltage, then events are uh, produced every time there is a brightness change of uh, a specified size. So light is converted into this asynchronous stream of events. Uh, which are represented on the right image as here, uh, with grayscale meaning there was no event in the last few milliseconds, and bright and black meaning um, that there was a positive event or negative event. Okay, this is one type of events, but the, the ATIS has another type of events called exposure measurements events. And these are grayscale events that model the sustained visual pathway, the what system, and the intensity is uh, encoded in, in time, and we will see that. So it means that if we have light that arrives at the pixel and it, there is um, a brightness change detected, then this change detector will trigger a signal that will activate a second uh, part of the pixel, which has another photodiode and it has uh, an exposure measurement circuit that what it does, it will integrate light between two levels. So this event that represents there was a change detected triggers uh, two other events. And these two other events are um, so obtained by comparing light with uh, two comparators and the time that it takes uh, to decrease the voltage of this signal to leak then 
that's uh, a measure of how bright or how dark um, the signal arriving at the photodiode is. So the gray level is encoded in the inverse of, um, of the time that it takes to decrease uh, the voltage according to the light that arrives at the photodiode. Basically, there are three events. One is the first event, is the change detection event, and then there are two other events. And the time between these two events, they encode the grayscale value. You can see also here. So if it's long time, and then it, it means that the light at the arriving at the photodiode was not very very intense, so it takes a lot of time to integrate. Um, and if it's very bright, instead it takes very short time to decrease the to discharge um, that circuit. And the output when we plot it and we collect these grayscale events in the last few milliseconds, this is what we get. Black means that there was no event basically. And then you see that the signal is no longer just black or white or gray, it has the grayscale values. So these are on the top change event and the bottom these are exposure measurement or grayscale events. And there are no frames, both uh, change detection and exposure measurement events are asynchronous. This is a sensor that was developed in, uh, in France and it's manufactured by Prophecy. Let's see with some videos, an example of it. On the top left, you see the output of a standard camera. We are visualizing some traffic scene. On the top right, you see the change detection events. Um, and on the bottom left, you see the exposure measurement or grayscale events. So if the camera was moving, then we would see that this signal here represents something close to uh, the output of the standard camera. Grayscale events. As you can see, the events are filling up the regions where there are uh, moving things in the in the image plane since the camera is static. And this on the right represents the amount of data transmitted with the standard camera or with the 80s. So this could be used, for example, for pixel level video compression. Let's see another example to get a better understanding of this. So we have an 80s camera here in the middle. We have a transmitter, but it's on the left and a receiver on the right. And now we can see on the screen on the left, these are the grayscale events, the grayscale signal, which are now being transmitted to the right computer. And we are displaying them. So we're just basically taking that the, the value at each pixel is the, the grayscale event. The, yeah, the color of the last grayscale event arriving at the pixel. Yeah, so this is a different type of sensor that has both uh, change detection events and exposure measurement events. And let's go with the third uh, main uh, design, and it's called the uh, Davis, the Dynamic Pixel and Active Vision Sensor, which outputs events, standard frames, and IMU data, and that's represented here in this plot. So frames come at a constant rate. I don't know, every 25, uh, so one over 25 hertz, uh, and they are grayscale frames. Uh, there could be also color. And then these blue dots, they represent events. So we don't need to pay too much attention now to the trajectories. Uh, but So here we see the frames and the events. We don't see the IMU data. And the frames and the events, they are on the same pixel array, which means that every pixel of uh, the Davis has a part that is the, the DVS pixel, so the change detector. This We know this circuit from before. And if we add a few transistors to each uh, DVS pixel, which are here represented in blue, then we are able to read out the grayscale value. And that's, this is the part of the pixel that uh, will provide the, uh, yeah, the information that generates the frames. And the frames could be rolling or global shutter, and they could be grayscale or color. Uh, but they are not high dynamic range. They still have like a limited range of about 55 decibels. And the frames resemble the information in the watt visual pathway. So they have 
grayscale value. The spatial resolution initially of this sensor was about 240 by 180 pixels with the Davis 240C. And um, as far as I know, they have uh, gone up to VGA resolution, 640 by 480, but they could be made bigger. And it's a sensor that is manufactured by Innovation and Insightness. The reference here is uh, at the bottom of this journal paper. Okay, so in this plot, now we'll see the output of the camera. But before that, let's remind that frames are represented. If this is horizontal axis is time, frames come at a constant rate. And then these events, the DBS events, so the change detection, they are like spikes and they come asynchronous continuously in time. And now let's visualize the output of the Davis. These are the grayscale frames at an artificially low rate. And now uh, we see these red and blue, red and green dots, which are the, the events. So we see again that the, the frames are kind of uh, synchronous and could be lagging behind, whereas the events is a much more continuous representation of the motion in the scene. So in a nutshell, uh, this is uh, what it is. These are the different main designs. So the DBS, the Davis, and the 80s, they all three have changed detection events. So these events that have X, Y, T, and polarity. And the difference is really in the, in the grayscale. So the DBS has basically no grayscale information uh, directly read out of this grayscale information. Uh, the 80s has the exposure measurement events, and the Davis has the grayscale in, um, in the form of frames. Um, the change detection events, they are HDR, the latency and power consumption of these three sensors are all very similar, and the manufacturers, they, they change. Okay, now let's take a look at a very related topic, which is the types of events. Um, so first, and they are the DBS or change detection events. We've talked about them. So every event is in pixel coordinate, timestamp, and polarity. Then we've seen today that there are grayscale events by the 80s. These are called exposure measurements. So every event is in pixel coordinate, the time at which uh, there was an intensity change that happened. And then instead of the intensity change, we read the absolute intensity represented here by L or its logs, log scale. Now, if we had two cameras, like a stereo camera, then we would have something called like a stereo event, right? <clears throat> so we would have events that include um, as an additional quantity, the index of the camera where the event was triggered. So we have the pixel coordinates, the timestamp of the event, the polarity, and uh, the camera index. We will also see that there are something called color events and color from the DBS, which uh, we just need to include the channel where the change detection event was generated. Or there are also color events from an 80s, which are these grayscale events. Now there will be color events of so exposure measurements event. There will be the pixel coordinates, the timestamp uh, <clears throat> of the event and then three absolute intensities for red, green, and blue. In general, they ha we have the concept also of uh, augmented events. And these augmented events is basically that we have the <coughs> XY coordinate uh, of the pixel, the timestamp, the polarity. And so it, this is like a normal change detection event. And we can add more information given, for example, by the output of some algorithms. And some examples are, if you compute something called the lifetime of the event or the optical flow, then you could append these values if you do it for every event. For every event, basically, you have an, an, as input uh, change detection events or a stream of this. Then they pass through an algorithm, and the algorithm outputs another stream of events, and these are augmented events. It could also be that this extra or additional information be uh, Def, 
the depth of every event, for example, as a result of combining an event camera and a depth sensor. So what's the meaning of events? Well, events can signal any kind of information with associated uh, time and, and place, uh, the pixel coordinates and the time that the event happened. This could be um, intensity, local spatial contrast, temporal contrast like the DDS does, etc. Ideally, it represents uh, events represent a meaningful data, meaningful information to reduce the data rate and therefore decrease demands on bandwidth, memory, and power consumption for transmission, storage, and post-processing. And the idea is represented in this uh, image. Now, instead of having a conventional camera that transmits whole images, which are lots of uh, data, and then it's, they are expensive to compute, we would have more complex or smart pixels near the, the image plane, and this will do some processing already there, uh, like the DVS does, for example, is doing uh, intensity differentiating and only transmitting the non-redundant data. These are the events. These are events and they're therefore for later processing stages. The ter so the term event has evolved uh, from address event representation. It was a protocol invented for this type of sensors, AER. Um, unfortunately, today, uh, event mostly refers to only the brightness changes output by the DDS. But if we are a bit more uh, open in mind, event could be not only the change detection, but any type of uh, meaningful data uh, that it's transmitted from, from the sensor. So where could this be going? Uh, well, it goes into the direction of performing low-level visual processing uh, on chip near the image plane in analog computing and transmitting only meaningful data or meaningful information of the chip. Uh, if one counts the number of transistors, for example, on every uh, pixel, different sensors, then we have an increase in pix pixel complexity. So standard pixels um, for normal cameras, they don't have many transistors, and that's why you can put many of those in a small uh, space. Then you need more transistors to add uh, to get a DVX pixel because you need a differentiator, you need the comparators, etc. The Davis pixel, as we have seen, they require even a few more transistors. And if we continue in this change, then we go into something called pixel processor arrays or cell cellular processor arrays, which uh, for every pixel, they have a small uh, processor. That's basically the idea. They have a photoreceptor part, and then you have some um, registers that allow you to do some computations. So I mean, the, this could be the example of the SCAM sensor developed at the University of Manchester. So in this sense, we are dedicating more area to processing and less for transducing light for the photodiode, which means that light conversion is not as efficient uh, as if we dedicated all the area to the photodiode. But this could be improved if we had a stack approach where we could have like uh, in the generation four of the, um, the DVS by, by prophecy, we have like a one layer that it's doing the photoreceptor part and the, the processing is it's stack. It's not at the same uh, level so that you have light, uh, the area of the pixel is competing for how much light they get, but instead um, you have them stuck um, so that you try to use as much of the area of the pixel as possible for transducing light. And these are still prototype sensors and academic use, uh, not much produce. And now we are entering more the realm of uh, computational imaging or photography. We are trying to design better pixels. Uh, and we try to get, take into account not just the, the sensor, but the whole pipeline end to end, what's going to be done with, with that sensor. Here are some references. I encourage you to take a look at the journal papers of the three main sensor designs, the DVS from 2008, the 80s from 2011, and Davis from 2014. And there are also some papers that uh, compare the sensors, such as this one from uh, uh, Proceedings of the IEEE in 2014, and a very recent paper on uh, general topic of event cameras. Thank you very much.